Stand up and walk. Move forward. Words he had once needed to hear himself. And words he probably still needs to remember. It was a beautiful scene. Episode 4, An Alchemist's Anguish. So many great mustaches in this show. You must be the bloodthirsty murderer who's been making a habit of targeting state alchemists lately. You picked the wrong target! Nice. That's some creative metal bending. You're fast. Try this! A little more! Hm. Nah, he's not captured. Oh, I'm still not used to how gory this show is. This killer was highly skilled. Major, you watch yourself. For all we know, you could be the next one he comes after. Understood. Not Alex. Fuhrer Bradley, Your Excellency, what brings you here? So somebody pointed out to me that his name is King Bradley, and his title is Fuhrer, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for that because I never would have figured that out ever. But I love how active Bradley is in daily affairs. Like he really hits the streets. He's not afraid to get out there with his sword, slicing people up. I love the respect he gets too. The philosopher still. The power it gave Cornello was real enough. He transmuted this huge chimera right in front of us. It might help if you consulted a specialist, a sewing life alchemist, Shao Tucker. Okay, what's the catch? You want something, don't you? I'm trying to repay you for your work on the Lior case. Doing you a favor is better than being indebted to you. So I guess that chimera turned out to be more important than I thought it would be. Roy Mustang is an interesting character. In the first episode, he's sort of framed as someone who's like frustrated with his position and with not getting respect or something like that. Here he's being shown as being lazy and not doing his job correctly. There is something weird about it. Like he has his own motives for something. Ed clearly doesn't trust him, but he was able to get Ed to open up by talking about the Philosopher's Stone because that's something Ed is passionate about. I can't even put my finger on it, but there's just something about him. I feel like there's more than meets the eye. Man, this house is huge. Uh is that Naga? You okay, Ed? Sort of. Daddy! There are people out here! Why are you interested in bioalchemy? You transmuted your mother? So that's what earned you the title Full Metal Alchemist. You've had a rough time of it for someone so young. That's for sure. I'm going to head back to work now. I'll send somebody by to get you this evening. They've got some ability to focus. I'm not sure they even know we're here anymore. Quite a catch, these two. A couple of prodigies. That is a great observation about Ed and Al, and also I think that's the way most people would respond to that. Like, I've definitely felt that in my life. There are some people who are just so driven and so good at what they do, you can't help but feel a feeling of awe. And, like, the instinct is just to step back and get out of the way, and, like, you do your thing, because it's so rare. I think most people are sort of just drifting in a, in a zone of complacency, where getting by or performing adequately is sort of the goal. For Edward, he sort of has no choice, right? Like it's an, emo an emotionally driven thing. It's it's from pain. And I think that is one way to actually really be driven is intense dissatisfaction with the way things are. But I also know people who have managed to get to this state even without this kind of like pain driven background. And those people that I know who do that, they are that way because they've given themselves that feeling. They just start on a path without worrying about the immediate failures. And one interesting thing about that for me is for a long time, I always felt like I was waiting for motivation to come. But what I've noticed from those people is that they just take action and somehow the action itself creates the motivation. It's a trait that I really admire in people and it's something that obviously everyone really admires about Ed. Like he's able to get away with a lot of stuff like being rude to his superiors and stuff like that just because everyone recognizes like this guy is special, just get out of the way. Al being the nice guy. He sort of is like the big brother. In case you forgot, we didn't come here to play horsey. <laughs> this dog looks so huge in the air. Alexander says that he wants to play too. His name is Alexander too? Damn, we got two Alexes in the show. Playtime is over. I will not lose this time! I, Edward Elbert, will use my considerable powers to vanquish you! The ultimate enemy. Cute dog. Just gotta go with it. Down there, eh? Just go with it. Enjoy the love. Say I'm taking a break from a long day of research. After all that, you must be dog tired. Get it? We'll play some more tomorrow, okay, Nina? Okay. Elsa's such a sweetheart. I love him. Oh, Mr. Tucker, I almost forgot. I've got a message for you. It's from the Colonel. He says, "Don't forget, assessment day is coming soon." Yes. Please assure him I know. Uh oh. What is assessment day? I don't like the sound of that. The dog's gonna be all right. 
right? I don't like that. I don't like animal deaths. I'm still triggered from Bosco's death. Hey, Daddy? What does assessment day mean? Yeah, what does assessment day mean? And why is it so sinister? State alchemists have to report on their research once a year in order to keep their certification. Last year, Nina, your daddy didn't get a very good evaluation. Unless I do something really impressive this year, I won't be a state alchemist anymore. Okay, but leave the dog out of it. I have to try hard. Damn, man, this guy's just crushed by the bureaucracy. Full He's gonna do something. Alchemist. Oh, this is so cute! Show Full Tucker. Alchemist. I love these name cards, they're awesome. It must get kind of lonely with just you and your dad living in this big house, huh? Mm-mm, not really. Daddy's so nice, and plus I've got Alexander to play with, too. <laughs> Alexander. Well, lately, Daddy's been studying in his lab all the time. I guess that does make me a little bit lonely. Oh man, this is a dark household. I should have known. This guy's wife left him on the verge of losing his job. He seems like a nice guy, but just pushed to the limits. He's got three mouths to feed. No one appreciates him. Poor Show Tucker. Oh, that was their father. <laughs> My shoulders are killing me. Maybe you should try to move around some, brother. Yeah, not a bad idea, Al. Hey, you mangy mutt! <laughs> Looks like you could use some exercise. <laughs> nice. Good to see Ed actually letting loose. Don't forget, assessment day is coming soon. Oh no, I feel for this guy. The pressure. Before I earned my state alchemist certification, our life was terrible. We were so poor in those days. My wife couldn't stand living that kind of life. So she left us. I can't afford to fail this assessment. I don't want to go back to those days again. I don't even think I could. I feel like you shouldn't be talking about this with her in the room. Mr. Tucker! Hey! Oh no. Nina! Mr. Tucker! There you are. So you are home. Yes. I did it, boys. I finally did it. A chimera that understands human speech. No! The dog and the girl? That person over there, that's Edward. That person, Edward. Yes, that's very good. Well done. Where's your daughter? Edward. Big Brother Ed. It's worse than I thought. Mr. Tucker, when did you first get your state certification? It was two years ago. When did your wife leave you? <gasps> it was two years ago, too. No. Where are they? Oh, yeah, I figured it out. Two years ago, it was your wife. This time, you used your own daughter and her dog to transmute a talking chimera! This is dark. <laughs> what the hell? I, I thought the dog would become a monster. I didn't think his daughter would be involved. A lot of darkness in this house. <laughs> what a weird, twisted set of priorities. Do you really think you can get away with this? Messing around with someone's life like that? Your own daughter! <laughs> You'd know all about that, wouldn't you? Look at you, Full Metal Alchemist! Look at your leg, your arm, your brother! Those things are also the result of messing around with somebody's life, aren't they? Yeah, it's way different though, because he's trying to bring someone back. This guy just sacrificed his daughter and his cute dog. One thing that occurred to me when listening to him talk is that this comes right after the last episode where Edward was talking about how he places all his faith in science. And here's this guy sort of taking it to an extreme, right? Like science above all else. And it's obviously terrible. There's a lot of things missing from that analysis, from like his perspective. He was just way off, like he's just lost it. This is playing God. There's an arrogance to this, like Rose was saying last episode. The opportunity was right in front of us and we took it. No! Not me! Alchemist dude! Do that! Is he gonna kill him? If you keep this up, he'll die! He's got quite a punch for a little guy. Can you undo this somehow? Edward, no. Daddy, do you hurt Daddy? I'm sorry. Even with all our power, we can't do anything. 
No. Can we play now? Can we play now? I get to remain a state alchemist. Like hell, you're staying a state alchemist. Like hell. Can we play now? So Ed is obviously better than this guy, and he's not evil, and Ed has way more humanity, but Ed is going to be sensitive about that because there is something in common between the two of them, and that is their value system, that their pursuit, alchemy and science and all that stuff, is going to bring them the answers that they need. And while the scientist is really easy to hate, I feel like it is an extreme example of something that is real and that I can relate to as well. People will do terrible things to get what they want, and they get there by, at some point, having the concept that achieving this or having this outcome is what's going to make me be able to value myself. And so focusing on that, going towards that, feels great. And on some level, it's a tragic thing because the closer you get to it, the harder it is to change course, but also when you get it, it won't be satisfying because it's based on the wrong wrong kind of fate. There is no outcome that will ever make you whole as a person. There is no achievement that will ever make you whole as a person. What I think actually gets you closer to that is not some outcome that's sort of out of your hands and based on other things, but rather having clarity of principles, having clarity of values as a person about what it means to be a good person and who who you would respect, and then working to honor those principles day in and day out. That sort of puts it in your hands, and that's something that you can do constantly, and it's not like a one-off thing where you're working so hard for this one thing and then you accomplish it. If anything, you'll feel good about it for like a week or two, and then you go right back to exactly the same place you were as someone without principles or values and not knowing who you are. It's just sort of the tragedy of the way we approach life. A state alchemist must be willing to act, able to take another's life when ordered to without questioning. In some ways, Mr. Tucker's actions and our own may not be all that far apart. No, they are very far apart. I hope. Roy, you want to be careful back in this guy here. He's not the guy for you. You will more than likely come across cases like this again in the future. I hope not. Al and I are still going to get our bodies back. We know the truth. We're only human! We can't even do anything to save one innocent little girl. So what good are we then? Wow, that was a great scene. Roy's values are all over the place. It's interesting to see where Ed's mind went this tragic thing happened and he's like, no, I'm getting my body back, right? Like he's so fixated on this because what is he without it, right? Like what is he without that thought? He would have to go all the way back to hit baseline, to hit that tragic baseline of like, my life is messed up. I've seen some messed up stuff. My mom's gone. I did this to my brother. Like by removing that goal, it would force him to kind of go back down to that point. And he sort of needs to go back down to that point. But the good thing about him is that he hasn't lost his humanity. Like he does understand the importance of other people and having ethics, right? And I think maybe his experience with his brother taught him that, right? Because that was him doing forbidden science, reaching for something taboo. But in that process, he lost his brother and he felt that feeling of what was actually important in that moment. And I think that's the big distinction between him and this guy. I wonder why no one's capable of understanding me. Because you just created your own world for yourself. You're Shao Tucker, correct? <laughs> who are you? Foolish alchemists who turn their backs on the ways of God. <laughs> Shall be punished. Weird how this guy doesn't seem as bad now from the beginning of the episode. Daddy's hurting. It's hearts to watch. You poor creature. Once you've been given this form, there is no way of separating you again. At least your passing will be in peace. Please grant these poor lost souls everlasting peace and salvation. Damn, I thought the second episode was dark. That one hurt to watch. It was painful to watch the girl like that. Do not like. <laughs> I mean, love the show, but sad, sad. Is this what it's gonna be like? Is this what the journey's gonna be like? How many people like that are there out there in this world of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? I feel so bad for the girl. I'll see you next time for hopefully more upbeat episode five. <laughs> uh.